Hello and welcome, Dirty William here, back with another episode of Magic Duels. All right, what we're going to do now is, first of all, look at this. I got I got 220 fake monies, and I could buy a booster pack if I wanted to, or I could hold out and buy two. I'm not going to buy any just yet, because there's no real reason to, because I have not yet gone into battle mode. Battle mode will allow me to go in and create decks. There's a deck wizard, which gives me step-by-step -step instructions, or I can just go into the deck builder and make one from scratch. I don't want to do that yet, though, because I want to finish up the story mode. So we're going to do this first. Then in the next episode, I'll probably play around with the builder, try to make a deck. Uh, so there is uh, Erebus's Titan, giant monster guy of doom. And this is the last guy we have to defeat, I assume, on uh, Gideon's uh, journey to become a planeswalker. Uh, let's see. This does not give me the option to trade my hand in or anything, uh, which is not that big of a deal. We, we can uh, throw down an elite vanguard first turn, which is what we're going to do. And then next turn we can have the uh, uh, Swift Claw. I don't know what to expect from this guy. I'm assuming a lot of black since he's like a zombie guy. And... Uh, Black, yep, yep, there we go. So he's playing a Swamp. Do you have a first turn play? No. All right. So we're going to chuck down a Plains. We're going to continue, and we're going to go into our uh, combat phase. Do the attack step. We're going to attack with all of our one guys. He has no blockers, so unless he plays something to kill this off, like a Disfigure or something similar. Nope, he, I don't even know if that's in here or not, but I know that is a thing. So he gets, uh, he gets him for two, taking him down. Now we're going to play our Swift Claw to set us up for next turn attacking for five, depending on what he plays, our opponent plays next turn. Let's see. Play another Swamp. Main phase. Brain Maggot. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals it on her hand. You choose a non-link card from it. Exile that card until Brain Maggot leaves the battlefield. So, I'm going to lose a card out of my hand until I kill off this 1-1 one, one guy. So, what is he going to take? Um... Maybe the Banisher Priest? I can't really read it that well, so I'm not sure what he's going to take. Yep. So he has exiled one of my cards, and he, he did, in fact, take the uh, Banisher Priest. So let's uh, go ahead and plop down the planes, and we're going to go ahead and play Honor of the Pure. Because we want to bulk up our guys and get them as big as possible and get in there. So now we're going to attack with all. Confirm the attack. If he blocks this guy, no big deal. I'm still going to be getting in for three, and I'll get my card back in my hand. He is not blocking, so he's going to take a total of seven damage. Three from my Elite Vanguard, and four from my Swift Claw. So he's now down to 11. So his is more of a controlling deck, it looks like, but with some creatures. Let's see if he has removal of some kind to kill off one of my guys. Grim Guardian. Constellation. Whenever Grim Guardian or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. So I'm going to lose one life. This is an enchantment creature. has a nice big fat end on it. It still does a little bit of damage. It's a 1-4. So that's a pretty good blocker. Plus it's going to drain me for, for one. And it looks like it's an enchantment heavy deck. So whenever he plays another enchantment, he's going to be draining me for one life a turn. All right, get another uh, thing down. We don't have enough to play either of these. So if we attack with both of these, that would be fine because neither of these guys can kill off either of my creatures. And we want to press our advantage. If he blocks with his 1-4, so be it. Yes, he does. He's actually going to block with both. So my 3-2 gets in. My Swift Claw is going to die. Both of his creatures, that one of his creatures is going to die, because mine only does three damage to, to that. So that's kind of disappointing, but that's going to happen. So let's continue. Oh, we got our Banisher Priest back. Enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until Banisher Priest leaves the battlefield. So let's go ahead and play that, and we'll go ahead and get rid of his Grim Guardian. Now, whenever he comes back in, though, if my guy dies, then I'm going to lose another life. But that's fine. Opponent's turn, his main phase, plays another Swamp. 
Looks like an all-black deck right now. He has a play. Uh, enchant creature gets a minus one, minus one for each swamp. He controls four swamps, so he's going to kill off my Banisher Priest to get his, his dude back. And he's going to drain me for one life. And whenever I attack next turn, he's going to have that one four to block with. So that's a pretty good little combo there. Good card interaction. Do I draw land? Nope, got another uh, another guy here though. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let us, if we attack, we're going to be attacking into a 1-4, which is going to soak up the damage. Neither of these guys are going to die. But that's fine. Let's go ahead and continue. We're going to skip our attack phase, and I'm going to go ahead and play my Swift Claw. And hope that we pull uh, another land next turn so I can play this uh, this uh, Sky Spear Cavalry, because that would be nice. We could also bump up one of our creatures with a 1-1 counter. Oh, he's got another one of these guys. Oh, so he's going to drain me for two. He's going to drain me one from the one that's already there. He's going to drain me from one from this guy, too. They're both going to trigger. Well, that's sad. Yep, I go to 16. All right, another planes. Good deal. All right, so what we're going to do is if we attack with both of these, he can block... Uh, let's see if he blocks that. He's still getting in for three. So let's go ahead and continue on to our combat phase. We're going to attack with all. Confirm the attack. Oh, he's just separately blocking. Okay. So that guy's going to survive. His other Grim Guardian is going to die. That's fine. Now we're going to plop down the Sky Spear Cavalry. That becomes a 3-3 with Double Strike and Vigilance. Or Flying, rather. Alright. This is his big turn to play something big. Wow, he didn't play anything. Wow. Well. <coughs> he's dead this turn, then. Because this has flying, he can't block this. This has double strike, so he's doing six. He'll block my Swift Claw, but he'll still be taking three from that, unless he has something in his hand. Huh. Let's go ahead and continue on to our attack phase. We're going to attack with everything. Confirm. Let's see if he has a combat trick. He's going to block. Yep, he's going to block there. Ah, uh, here we go. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. So he is more than likely going to kill off my flyer. So I'll still be getting in for three with my elite vanguard. So he'll be going down to five. But my flying double striker is going to be gone. Yep. He's going to lose his creature. Okay, he's going to take three, go down to five. He's going to lose his creature here because this will do four damage to his four toughness. My Swift Claw will remain. And let's see. Supply Cranes or Eagle of the Watch? Do I want a 2 1 flyer or do I want a 2 4 flyer that can give a plus one plus one to one of my guys? I think I'm going to drop this guy. And I'm going to put a counter on my Swift Claw. Or should I put it on here and make him a 4-3? I kind of want to toughen this guy up if at all possible. I'll do that. End of the turn. What's he got? Doom Wake Giant. Whenever Doom Wake Giant or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So if I had not put that counter on him, uh, I guess he would have... No, he still would have been alive. Yeah, he would have been dead for combat damage, I'm sure, uh, on uh, some kind of attack. Let's see. Well, I could figure that into the equation, too, though. So, all right. He's going to get uh, to put minus one, minus one counters on all of my creatures. So that kind of sucks. So this kind of negates my Honor of the Pure enchantment. Plays another land. Now he's got a 
I do have a 2-4 flyer that I can do something with, so I can at least get him down a little bit. Uh, let's see, he would block here, so I would actually be doing 6 damage, and that should win me the game, unless he has a 1 mana cost something in his hand. So let's go ahead and continue on to our combat phase. We're going to attack with all, confirm the attack. See how he blocks. He cannot block this guy. Yep, he's going to block here. Now, does he have a trick? Apparently, he does not. He's going to be taking three, going to two. He's going to be taking three from my supply line cranes and going down to negative one. These guys are going to deal their combat damage, and that's going to be the end of that. I got more fake money. I'm up to 270 fake monies. My god, what am I going to do with all that money? Holy crap. So what happened is, I my spark was lit, and I managed to pop over to uh, Bant, which is one of the shards of Alara, which uh, that was a very, very good expansion. I really, really, really liked that expansion. All right, so I completed Gideon's campaign. I got three boosters to open. Nice. Grief stricken over the death of your comrades, your planeswalker spark ignites, sending you to Bant. You discover a realm of chivalry, and you're inspired to walk the path to knighthood. You take the name Gideon Jura, and you seek redemption. I don't really want to know what I need redemption for, I just... I kicked all kinds of ass. Um, do I want to open the boosters now? I don't want to, and it won't let me out of it. Well, that's disappointing. Huh. And it won't let me won't let me out. All right, I guess I'll open one booster for now, and I'll open the others uh, in the next episode. So let's open a booster. What do we get? We got Titanic Growth. Target creature gets a plus four, plus four until end of turn. That's a nice little instant. Orchard Spirit can't be blocked except by creatures of the flying or reach. So that's a thing. Wild Instincts, target creature you control, gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. It fights target creature and opponent controls. Fighting is you pick a creature on the uh, opponent's team, basically, and my creature and your creature fight. They have a little little spat. Blood Cursed Knight, a multicolor white-black creature, Vampire Knight, 3-2. As long as you control an enchantment, Blood Cursed Knight gets a plus one, plus one, and has lifelink. Wow. That is That becomes a... F if I have an enchantment... It becomes a 4-3 creature with life link. That is not bad at all. And it's actually pretty well costed just because. Wow. Uh, let's see. Fiery Conclusion. As an additional cost to cast Fiery Conclusion, sacrifice creature. Deals 5 damage to target creature. Eh. It's not, it's not awful. Uh, if it could hit a, a player instead, it would be much, much better. But it does not. And the last one we have is Flame Shadow Conjuring. It's an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one red. If you do, put a token under the battlefield that's a copy of that creature. The token gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So you get to copy a dude. And it has haste, which is kind of cool. Well, I guess we're going to have to open the other boosters because it will. there's nothing that will allow me out of that. I don't like that very much. I'd like to save the boosters and open them when I want to. So, I guess that's the thing. We'll just have to open all the boosters in this episode. Next booster, this booster. Might of the Masses. Target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature you control. I'm trying to scroll up to see it a little bit better, but it won't let me. Odd, very, very odd. Um, Yeva's Force Mage, it's a two, two for three. When it enters the battlefield... Oh, there we go. Um, target creature gets a plus two, plus two until the turn. So it's a little pump spell for uh, another creature you've got. Here's a Might of the Masses. That's uh, good for if you have something with Trample. If you have a bunch of creatures on the table, uh, this will kind of mess up combat math a bit. Rocks Maulers. Uh, five cost, four, four. Trample and Renown. Renown two. When this creature deals combat damage to a player, if it isn't renowned, put two plus one plus one counters on it, and it becomes renowned. So this will become a six six with trample, um, which is not a bad thing at all. 
Uh, Sigil of Valor. For some reason, it's not letting me. There we go. Uh, whenever a equipped creature attacks alone, it gets a plus one, plus one until a turn for each other creature you control. Uh, this is something that if you have like one big creature, one good champion or something on the table, then you can uh, attack with no. Well, yeah, kind of. Um, it's for each other creature you control. So if you're playing a white weenie deck and you have a bunch of little dudes out all over the place, that would help one of your creatures at least. Uh, Enthralling Victor. A uh, human warrior, four cost for a three two. Whenever it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature and opponent controls with power two or less until the end of turn. I tap that creature, it gains haste until the turn. So whenever this enters the battlefield, I get to grab a creature that's not that powerful, but maybe a blocker or something. Uh, I get to untap it, attack with it, and it get, because it gains haste, I can attack with it that turn. So I'm removing a blocker and gaining a fighter, but for four mana, it's kind of expensive. Despoiler of Souls. Two cost, 3-1, can't block, no biggie. Pay two, exile two other creature cards from your graveyard, return Despoiler of Souls from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this gets into a little bit of graveyard stuff. You can pull back some, pull back this creature. So that is actually kind of nice for a, like a reanimation type of deck. If you have a lot of creatures in your deck and a lot of them going to the graveyard, you can pay two, exile those from the game, and you get this guy back, which is not bad. It's a 3-1. Can't block, but you don't really care about that. And the next one. What's up? Let's see. Ring Warden Owl. Be nice if this would let me. For some reason, it won't. It takes a minute to catch up. Huh. I'm trying to uh, scroll through it, it won't let me scroll. All right. Uh, Ring Warden Owl costs five. It's a 3 3 flyer with prowess. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets a plus one, plus one until end of turn. So that's not terrible, I guess. Becomes a 4-4 four, four flyer. Uh, Mage Ring Bully. Man, I can't read that. My eyes are bad. 2-2 uh, two, two for two. So right there, it's pretty good. It also has prowess. So whenever I cast a non-creature spell, it gets a plus one, plus one. Uh, Mage Ring Bully attacks each turn of Able. So you have to attack with it. Uh, Guardians of Melorus is a 0 6 for, I can't tell if that's 3 or 5, my eyes again are bad. Uh, defender, it can't attack, so it's just a wall basically. Undercity Troll, 2 2 for 2, it has Renown and Regeneration. Totem Guide Hardbeast, um, it's a 2 5 for what looks like 6. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an aura card, reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle the library. So you can go and get an aura, uh, like Honor of the Pure, for example, and get it in your hand, and you can plop it down on the table. Uh, Tragic Arrogance. Oh, my allergies are acting up. I had a big old coughing fit. <clears throat> and the last card, Tragic Arrogance. Uh, five cost sorcery each play for each player you choose from among the permits that player controls an artifact a creature an enchantment and a planeswalker then each player sacrifice all other non-land permits he or she controls so you get to pick something for them uh, you pick out one artifact one creature that they control one enchantment and a planeswalker <clears throat> and they sacrifice the rest so that's kind of kind of neat uh, so let's go back to our card collection get out of that Go back to the main menu. Yeah, I don't I don't like that very much where you have to do that. That's very disappointing where you have to open up your, your boosters. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> looks like we are finished. Oh, I thought we were finished with Gideon. Oh, I unlocked this story by playing one battle mode duel. So we have to do battle mode for this. And that's going to be in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, this is Dirty William reminding you to do the dirty work. Mm -hmm.